Alrighty, good evening everyone. It is Tuesday, August 20th for the Middlesex Select Board meeting at 5 o'clock. We are working on um, an amended agenda. So we're going to call it to order and welcome guests. We have Linda Fenton here. We have George Longnecker. We have Jane Shoup on the Zoom. We have Peter Zooming in and we have Randy not here. And we have Dorinda as well. And we have Orca. Welcome, Orca. <laughs> okay, so we are going to approve the minutes of August 6, 2024, regular meeting and public forum action likely. Any discussion about those minutes? No, nope, I'd make a motion to pass the minutes for August 6, regular and public forum. All righty, is there a second? I'll second it. All righty. All those in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 All righty. And now we are going to approve the agenda for August 20th, regular meeting, action likely. Are there any amendments, Sarah? Uh, only that Janet Lee has removed her request. Okay. All right. So Janet has removed her request about the mailbox and any other? Additions, all righty. Um, so is there a motion? To approve the minutes. I will make a motion to approve the minutes. All righty. And Vic has seconded it. And all those in favor say oh, aye. 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 Thanks, Peter. Peter has thirded it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now it's 5.05. .05. We are ahead of schedule. And folks, let's try to stay on schedule, even though I know we might have some, some discussion about... Um, 545. All right, so highway report and FEMA update. Um, reviewing the state of road repairs and VEM's announcement that reimbursement for 2023 permanent road repairs will likely be delayed due to FEMA's financial shortfalls. Action possible. So just quickly, um, did you want to give the highway update too or no? I mean, he no. called me and he just basically said that they're working on, um, Eric said they're working on um, Bulldog Road right now. So primarily they've just been working on repairs um, from the flood. So they're not really doing too much maintenance, just more just right. helping out dirt tech. Oh, right. And then um, they're going to be moving next to, I've already forgotten what road they're going to be moving next to. Eric's not here tonight. No, he's not here tonight. He doesn't do his little uh, his little update. Well, I think I he think does, important. but not every week. What's up? Yeah, no, not every week he doesn't do it. No, like his little list, that little list. Right. Yeah, no, not every week. Um, we should encourage him to do that every week to do a. Well, um, you know, we didn't get one last meeting either. So. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I can ask him to do that. Um, uh, and yeah, and I talk to him every night, so uh, to give my update on social media. So it's, we kind of all had a yeah. everyday update. Okay, good. I, I'm only saying that is uh, one of the reasons I'm saying that is because uh, we get a lot of interaction with that. What what's the town doing? Mm -hmm. We don't see the town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, well. And I think it's important that they know. Okay. Yeah. Well, so you're doing some posting on, mm -hmm. you're doing posting on Front Porch, not Front Porch Forum, Facebook a lot and Front Porch Forum. Uh -huh. As right. well. Yeah. So Every time I yeah. post, it's Front Porch Forum, Facebook, yeah. and next door. Perfect. Um, okay. And what would you like to tell us about FEMA? About FEMA? Yeah. Or about the work that's being done? Yeah. Um, Dirt Tech is working on their last project for the emergency work for this 24 uh, flood, which okay. is on Brook Road. That will end that. They also have a crew uh, working on ditching uh, on East Hill, ditching and, and stone lining. Mm -hmm. And they are installing culverts on Center Road. That's what they've been doing right now. 
Uh, they just finished putting culverts on South Bear Swamp Road. Um, they oh, the where um, above Paul's Zabritsky's. I saw them there. Yeah. Paul, by the way, um, came over to me at the concert, thanking us profusely for the culvert work that he says saved his driveway from the latest rain. So thank you. It was that Paul Zabritsky or Paul? Paul Zabritsky. Okay. Yeah. Um, they're going to concentrate. Uh, they get done uh, that on Brook Road. They're going to concentrate on East Hill and Center Road to get those two roads 100% complete. Um, I don't, I'm not sure that they can have all the gravel down before the school. I don't know when the school starts. Next week, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday? Nope, they won't be done by then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's where they'll be headed to, but they won't, the buses will be able to get through anyway. And is that for 2023 permanent work? Yes, orders? Okay. it is. It is. Um, I have also uh, talked with FEMA people today about um, some of the ditching and surface work that we're going to be doing that's under their contract with Dirk Tech. And it also overlaps with this storm. Mm. Um, and talking about how to separate that. Uh, you know, we talked about, you know, maybe do a change order or whatever. If it's just a little bit of difference, that's not the end of the world. But when it's, um, you know, a, a, another few thousand feet of ditching or another couple thousand feet of road surface. Uh, so he was suggesting that we give them a contract for this 24 work so that it can be done in concert rather than Dirt Tech, say, working on East Hill and doing just so much ditching and say, well, this is 24 stuff, so we're not doing anymore. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make uh, dollar sense in that. Um, if Sarah brought it up again with, their, with uh, the FEMA about, you know, going out after, you know, putting it out to bid. Well, putting some of this stuff out to bid is going to be timely. And so what I'm suggesting is that we do a contract with Dirt Tech for, say, three roads. The roads are going to be finishing right up, East Hill, uh, Center Road, and Brook Road. Let them complete the gravel and the ditching on those three roads under two different contracts. How do we get around the requirement of bidding, though? Having to put it out to bid. I thought we had to put it out to bid. Well, I, I think Dirk didn't Dirk say with FEMA that we don't that because it makes more sense to just have. Well, he did, but I mean that's that's not written in stone, that's, but yeah. it only makes economical sense. Uh, in that sense, well, I quite, totally agree with you. I'm just well, that's picturing him going well, in and putting out the bid. He was saying do right? a contract, but I'm saying rather than do the contract for all the roads, like maybe we just do the contract on these three roads. I see. Yes, Victor. Uh, is would would is Dirt Tech willing to do? Uh, you already have the items for ditching. You have the items for gravel. I haven't asked them that question. That's a good question, wouldn't it be to ask yes, them? Yes. No. I. And, if, and I, then, if they were going to be willing to do it for the same price, it would be. I would think, even FEMA would say it's not an issue. Right. No. I'm. I. Talking with Dirk today, and and that he's he didn't have an issue with that. I mean, he thought that was a good way of going, but that would be one of the questions okay. I'd ask. Uh -huh. It's just they would do it under the same price. Yeah. Peter Hood. Uh, so, gentlemen, I just want to be sure, or ladies and gentlemen, I just want to be sure whatever we do on this, we get FEMA's agreement. We don't assume because somebody gave us a verbal statement. I'm just targeting back to a year ago where we ended up doing things two and sometimes three times. 
because they kept changing their mind how they wanted us to do it. I want to be sure, to the extent we can, it makes all the sense in the world to me that we do it with change orders if we can, if we have to do separate contracts and they're willing to hold the pricing, that's fine. But uh, I just want to be sure FEMA agrees that that's the way to go. And my other, my other concern, which I'll bring up right now, and we can talk about it now or a little later, is we put the work that they did last year to a good test. And that was the work that was recommended by FEMA, approved by FEMA. Dirtech did it to their specs, as far as I know, and a huge amount of it failed. So, no, no I don't that's think not so. correct. No, no, that's not correct. Why do you say that? Because Dirt Tech didn't do any work last year. All that work was done by Hutchins, uh, uh, Percy, uh, Jay Merrill, and All Seasons Excavating. Dirt Tech had nothing to do with it. Okay, I, I, I amend my statement. Okay. It wasn't Dirt Tech, but we did the work with those contractors in accordance to what FEMA told us we should do, correct? Yes. Uh, and a lot of it failed. Okay, let me, Zara. I, I spent a couple of hours driving around and looking all over the roads in the last uh, in the last week. Anyway, I just want to be sure that when we do it this time, we try we try and do it in a better manner if that's possible. If it's not possible, then we, we, all we can do is the best we can do. But you know, one of the things that I observed was, you know, there were quite a few places where I don't think they crowned the road enough. You know, the water the water came down this time and went right down the middle of the road just like it did the last time. So let's just let's just try to make sure however we do it that we don't make so you mistake again. Okay. Zara. We're working with FEMA uh, and on the Build Back Better, so I don't know if the, these contractors that you're talking about, if they were made to rebuild it exactly the way or if we were upgrade, upsizing culverts at that point. But put that on hold because I do want to say that we're meeting with FEMA again on Thursday at 10 a.m., so I will ask Dirk um, about sending out RFQs versus hiring out Dirt Tech and have him put something in writing or get some, we'll get something more firm from him. There you go. Uh, Vic. Uh, Peter, Peter Hood is, is correct in that it seems like the stuff they did last year, but there's a couple of things. They never finished their work. If you remember, FEMA pulled, pulled stopped the contract work, uh, and they still had... Remember, uh, Hutchins left for two weeks. Now, you make whatever you want out of that, but they were, when they came back, they couldn't come back. So a lot of the places, and even like over on... on uh, My road? Yes, your road. My road yeah. did well. But the stone was higher than the, uh, the, the edge of the road, so the, it's like McCullough Hill. It couldn't get it, the water couldn't get into the ditch, so it just went and took the road out. And that had to be all done over again. And so I think it's very important. It's like some of these places they went up through, uh, they, Dirtech went up through this year, and they got the road widened right out over the ditches, and this all should be addressed before winter. And that's a good thing? That's a bad thing. Because oh. the water, because they got it pushed out, they got the ditches full. Why'd they push it out? What the dozer operator wanted to do. I don't know where you're talking, but I mean, right, oh, right, right down McCullough Hill, for example, right down all the way down up around the hill there below my house, all the way up around that road's built up too high on the low side of that curb. The water's going into the driveways. Uh, I just think. Oh, they, that happened to Susan Clark. That same thing, or is that a different end? Right, no, that's that's kind of the same thing. Yeah. I mean, Hutchins put the pipe in too shallow, and they backfilled it with dense graded. So when the water came down through and 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 couldn't take the culvert anymore, the dense graded hole does not uh, dams the the, the the dense graded is in uh, in the ground uh, more solid, if you will, and so the water takes the path of the easiest route. So it just went across the road over gotcha. to Susan's and down the driveway. Sorry. I think um, 
Vic, since you're both a select board member and on Team Fix, that it would be great for Vic to go around and make a list of these concerns so that we can address it with Dirt Tech now. I would agree. I mean, does it sound like Dirt Tech is doing something wrong? Well, <laughs> or just I, I not? They were, they were doing a bunch of repairs from this 24 storm right. and getting stuff and putting some dense grade in and that everything wasn't finished. The finished gravel wasn't in, there was no ditching done. It was yeah. to get people through. Yeah. They were told, if I'm correct, Steve, they were told we want to get two-way traffic. Yep. And so they just did whatever they could do mm. to get two-way traffic. To get two -way and they traffic. did. But outside of that two-way traffic, like Steve there's, just said, there's a lot of armoring of culverts. There's, there's a lot water. of ditching okay. and that type of thing to do. And we just got to, I would think, right. uh, yes. you or no, Eric or somebody, just make sure they do it, right? right. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I happen to know that Steve and Eric are driving around the town on Friday yep. to yep. do some things. So okay. you can make that list and then Vic can add to That was one of my next to. things I was going to say. Okay. Excellent. Can I just ask one question, though, yes, about sir. this combo thing? If this combo thing happens where they're repairing for 2024 and um, doing 2023 permanent work mm -hmm. or whatever it is they're going to yeah. be doing, how are they going to separate the bills? They'd have to do two separate bills. Okay, and they they would be have clear to do two. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yes, Peter. Yeah, guys, I just, excuse me. I just want to emphasize that I think we do work. I, I realize some of the work wasn't completed. Final grading wasn't completed, but there were places where I believe they said they were finished, and. They didn't work the way we intended them to work the way they intended them to work. And all I'm saying is, that's a good lesson for us when we go around again and try and redo this. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. However, I will remind us that, as they said at the community forum, the scientists and the road people there said, nothing, no matter what you do, is not going to sustain eight inches of rain in four hours. So really, we build these things not for 100 year storms, we build them for everyday storms, which are becoming like 100 day storms. And that problem has yet to be solved. But we are upsizing culverts. But we're upsizing culverts and we're doing what we think we can do, but we will never be, have our roads be at a place that can sustain that. eight inches of rain in a short period of time. But last night's storm, that was a big rain yesterday. It rained hard. It rained hard, yep. I think um, Eric said he drove around this morning and things looked fine. But anyway, okay, so keep going, Steve, sorry. Well, no, the last thing was what Zara just brought up. I'm going around Friday with Eric on all the roads and for the 24th stuff and for the permanent work that Dirt Tech is doing and prior, trying to prioritize uh, the work, especially their their contract work, because they are not going to complete that work this year. Yeah. Okay. And then for the 2024 storm that we got a public assistance declaration, according to Dorinda, at 2 o'clock today. So yeah. let's all clap our hands for joy. We don't have any money, but we got the uh, Yeah, we, we got the declaration. Um, are we, uh, when do we start to think about going out to bid for permanent repairs for 2024 storm? Soon. ASAP? For next spring, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know how many people you can get this right now. But well, the determination, if I, the determination can't really be made until you see what they get done this fall, so you know what they got to do next. Right. Right. That's kind of a catch twenty two. And they'll work until when? They can, the snowfalls. Well, you originally said October third, but I'm sure they'll go October. Was it thirtieth? Thirtieth of October. Fifteenth. Mid October. I thought it was mid October. Mid October. 15th. I think it was eighteenth, maybe. Okay. But depending on weather. Alrighty. Weather depending. The, the wrinkle there 
Yes. Is that our female rep leaves us October 15th. Why? So we're going to have a whole other. No, he leaves in November. Oh, I thought it was October 15th. <laughs> Hmm. I right. think I heard November too. He did. I think I November, heard November. He, okay. You asked him about that. We might be okay. Dirk. Yeah. So yeah. we'll get a new FEMA rep for. Yeah. 2024. Right. So, I, and let me just ask one more question. Did you say that you think this fall 2023 stuff will be wrapped up? No. No. Okay. Permanent work for 2023 will continue to be done by Dirk Tech in the spring of 2025. Yes. Because they haven't finished their contract I mean, or whatever, they haven't finished the job. Weather, depending. I mean, if, if the weather stayed good right through December, they'd they probably keep right on working and complete it. Okay. But Alrighty. Is there? Wouldn't count on that. Let's see. Um, and so, just a clarif clarification to all those on the um, Zoom and in our audience that. Um, we received an email from the state saying that FEMA um, has some financial shortfalls right now. And I think, Cheryl, you might have, did you confirm or did you just sort of speculate and assume that it's probably related to the budget season because our the fiscal year starts October 1 and maybe they've run out of That's money. That's part of what's going on, but he told us today that they do have some money to keep going little things okay little projects and stuff like that. okay but we should probably aren't going to expect to get big sums of money i don't know that yeah okay what was the last time we got a payment from fema do you know um, i don't it was that last 60 it was the day before the last yeah. the public meeting we got okay. it that day That's before but we're, we're we're very close to wrapping up three roads for the spreadsheets he needs i need one piece of information and then he has all the spreadsheets so that they can pay us back okay. for that grouping of roads. Good. All righty. Well, and how are we doing on our loans? <laughs> well, have we I overspent what them? What we're going to do is we're waiting to right before it's time to renew or for that other loan to extend it. We're going to borrow that 1.5 from them because it's going to have a lower right. interest rate. Good. Okay. And then have them extend that loan out. Okay. Once we have some bills that you know we know we're at a pretty good spot for the 2024 emergency work we just done we can actually apply for the vermont bond bank because they don't have that much money to okay to give out and right now our expenses for this current flood to date is 1.6 million hmm. it's like 1.6 million dollars from this for, is, for what Dirt Tech's done, John Picard, Full Dock Road, and the aggregates to date. And when you say Full Dock Road, is that the forty-one thousand dollars that they built you, something like that, and they gave you a discount? <laughs> they um, twenty-one thousand six hundred twenty-two. Yeah, and they gave us a discount, but then yeah. they turned around yeah. and built us for another thirteen hundred. Thank you. Did we feel pretty good about um, reconciling the bills? I know that was sort of an issue. We had like some big bills and you were waiting to get confirmation with everything. Right now, Steve's got the July bill that he needs to go through and that's um, because it's in draft format and they pulled off of, you know, Dirt Tech stopped that work and went on to do the emergency work. So he okay. needs to review that. And then we have four bills that are currently for this emergency work that Dirt Tech billed us for, but they didn't bill us by road. So Steve's gonna have to go back to them and they're gonna have to Straighten that out because yeah. we can't submit that to Dirt Tech under the way it's. I already put a call the in. A call in to. Dirt Tech about that. Okay. I'll talk with them again tomorrow. But so you're going to have to sort of sit down with them to figure out. Well. Because they, they want to get paid. Right. They, right. They're going yeah. to have to do it by road. I'm sure it's. It's not going to be easy, but I think they can do it relatively quick. They do, they do their billing really well by Excel spreadsheets and by day. So they may be able to do like a pivot chart yeah. or something to change that around in order to be able to sort it out by road. Okay. I mean, they say, Connie seems to be really, she works really well with Excel. Okay. Keeps track of that stuff. Is there any concern that they're going to be like, you haven't paid us, we're going to add a 10% fee? Not if they won't. That's a steep question. No. Okay. I Let's hope not. I think, I think it, it last year was, we had to do the same thing. I know, like Eric and I went to uh, a, uh, to uh, 
all seasons excavating to straight. We went to Jay Hutchins, the same thing. The Jay Hutchins, the same thing. And my point I'm trying to make is it's pretty difficult to do what FEMA wants us to do. It's a, it's a little bit out of the ordinary what the contractors normally do. Okay. But it can be done. The yeah. contract they've been able to do, they track it by road. So they've been able to do the contract itself by road. But as far as the emergency work, it's grouped, you know what I mean? So they'll yeah. say, you know, they did this road, this road, and this road. Yeah. For this period of work, and FEMA's not going to let us do that. It's, they want it by road, huh? material by coordinate or GPS coordinates, right. the whole pictures. <laughs> All right. Any other questions about roads? All right. I have one other thing left. All righty. Which is road related. Um, I've received a couple of questions about what the insurance situation is for people who voluntarily go out with their tractors and, you know, drag lots out of the road or do whatever to reopen the roads. And as far as I know, uh, the town insurance is not going to no. cover them in any way, manner, shape, nope. or form. Nope. Um, they have to, you know, they need to look to their own insurance carriers if they want to do that. And if they want to do it, they do it at their own uh, risk. So, Zenara, I think that's something that maybe you're road committee needs to get out to people so they understand exactly what the story is because I think some of them at least half expect that the town is going to protect them if something happens if somebody comes flying down and smashes into yep. their tracker or whatever it is so I'm wondering if that's something crew can help us out with because mm. they have insurance if somebody signs up with crew so I, I can call Liz and have that conversation yeah, I don't know. I'm a little suspect about, I don't know that crew gets involved in things like roads. I think no, they're I more think. about people's houses right. than that. Yeah, and I don't think they should get involved in our, <laughs> in our roads. Um, I think, I mean, it's, you know, as, as we all know, everybody does what they have to do when the road's blocked. I've been out there with my tractor pulling trees out of the road, you know, whatever, change, whatever. Right. But if people choose to do that as volunteers, they're on their yeah. own. They shouldn't come looking to the town. That's yeah. all I'm saying. We people do it all the here. time. They're out chainsawing. They're out dig pulling people out of ditches. They're out, yeah. It's at your own risk. Right, yeah. right, right. right. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, you know, I think it's a good thing to make it clear so we're not talking about it after the fact. Well, don't most people, well, their homeowners have a policy on their tractor? I know I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, they do not. I disagree. That's part of the problem. But about three years ago, and I'm gonna I'm gonna double check on this again to make sure it's the case. All Vermont homeowners policies change. Oh. And the only way you're covered for any of your own equipment is when you're on your own land. If you're in the town road or at your neighbor's house or down the street or wherever, they tell you you need to get a general liability policy, which is expensive. Oh, good to know. Well, I was not I would not at all presume that people's homeowners policies are covered them, but they need to make that call to their own insurance carriers and figure it out. I don't want to yeah. make a blanket statement and that's, say that's true right. for everyone. Well, and none of us should be saying to people, could you please go out and do this for us? No. no. And I'm sure we're not. So. No. Yeah. Um, no, I think for the most part, people are people are doing it on their own to be good neighbors and to get themselves out and right. you know, do whatever they have to do. But... It might be worth a post on Front Porch Forum just okay. to say, you know, this is not, we, the town does not endorse this. We're not asking anyone to do this, and it's at your own risk. I will say, Sarah, I sent you an email a long time ago, and not a long time ago, but it might have been between these last two meetings. Just there's one more thing to add about the roads was that Liz from Crew um, had reached out to see if we had sandbags because she said that when they needed to get sandbags, they had to like get some sort of requisition from the state or something to like get sandbags for people. I have seen that people in Middlesex actually do have sandbags around some of their things. And I'm wondering if we want to make sandbags available to people, like either we just have the bags and they can fill themselves at our pit or maybe we have a day, a volunteer day, where people make sandbags and people can come and pick them up if they need them. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I have actually seen sandbags on people's, like on Brook Road, they have them and stuff. I think I saw an AOT email saying that if you need sandbags, just go to wherever it was and just say, 
Todd sent you kind of thing. Todd mm -hmm. sent out. So I can I'm just wondering for our own neighbors if we want to have it. If we, get if it. we want them just as a courtesy, right? There's something we can do to help people. I don't think we need to make an action item of it, but I just um, wonder if there's a reason why we wouldn't do that. Like, because sand's so expensive. Okay. What I would suggest is that you see it on TV, you see it in Montpelier, they're doing it, they have like a little operation, a little yeah. thing that fills the bag and the bags, and Barry City does, and mm -hmm. just reach out to them and ask them, how do we do this? Okay. Right. This is a suggestion. Okay. Um, all righty, so we are right on schedule. Um, the fire department, I believe, I thought I saw, oh yes, there he is. There he is. Um, would you like to update us, please, Jeff? Sure. So starting off, I'm going to be quite blunt with this. This is probably the worst reporting period since I've been on the department. My uh, God, because it's two pages long? No. No, okay. it's one page. Okay, uh, not by the number of calls or anything, just the uh, mental anguish that uh, department members have gone through oh. this period. Uh, and I'll address that as we go through. So far we're up to 73 calls, so we're looking like we're going over 100 this year. Wow. Uh, 14 calls during this period, which is uh, a lot. We had three mutual aids out, two in. Um, the real highlight here is the max number respond 12. Um, That's great. We're, we're really getting up there. Uh, min number was two. Uh, our average stayed at five, which is really good. Engine one was out 12 times and six out once, and that was scary on Macy Road. Um, tanker one out four times, rescue out five times, struck 14, we haven't had out in five uh, POV responses. So we started off the, the period with a lightning strike near a house on Gillimet Road. Uh, fortunately, that one didn't catch fire, uh, did blow some circuit breakers and stuff. And we had a uh, car versus deer. Those never go well for the deer. Um, we had a drive-by reporting of logs on fire in the area of East Hill and Davie. It was actually a permitted burn. Um, Macy Road, we had a truck off, and that's where it was just wide enough to get engine six through. Um, but interesting. Had a structure fire on uh, Route 12 in Berlin, which we sent a tanker out for. So that's a call that we normally wouldn't have a lot of responders, uh, so that kind of messes with the numbers a little bit. Shady Rail and Wood um, Road, we had a, we thought was a, a rescue of a nine-year-old child underwater under a rock. Um, so that's one of the mental anguish ones that came. When we got there, um, her foot was caught under a rock. It was three inches of water, and her mother had her out by the time we got there. But en route from my house to there, um, there's all kinds of stuff going through your head. Plus, you're communicating with dispatch about getting excavators, <coughs> oh God. other departments in, and uh, so that's one of the things to deal with. <coughs> we had um, East Bear Swamp. There was a smoke, haze, and smell. It was actually from the Canadian fires. Mm. Um, so this one on the 28th was probably the worst. Mm. Um, there's a vehicle doing well over 100 miles an hour, according to um, witnesses. Crash, caught on fire, two people, uh, I guess, were killed instantly, but burned in the vehicle. Oh. There were five of us, on, or six of us on scene, and uh, that's a hard one to deal with. Uh, and I'll go over some of that afterwards. Jonesbrook Road, we had a structure fire, and right as they're finishing up with that, we got another one over in Corey Road. And for those of you in Middlesex who don't know where Corey Road may be, because I didn't know until earlier this spring, if you take the road off to head into the, the dam from Montpelier, oh, yeah. Corey Road is a left hand turn down there, and there are two or three houses that are actually in Middlesex. Um, so there was a um, a light fixture that caught on fire in there, so it's considered a structure fire. We called Montpelier in because we were involved in another place in Moortown, which we had mutual aid out to, 
So we need a mutual aid for Montpelier, and they're way closer than we are from this side of town. Um, we had a motor vehicle accident on uh, 89 again. Um, then we had a Winooski River search. This is another um, sometimes hard one to deal with. There was a possible jumper in Montpelier. <coughs> So my peer called us to look at the river at 10.30 at night. Um, so we're trying to light up the river to see if we see anybody. The river was moving somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four miles an hour. Um, we got the call about 26 minutes after they reported the possibility of a jumper. Doing the math, you figure out where that person could be if they haven't caught up on any of the logs in the river. So you're stressing out about trying to find somebody in that scenario. Um, then we had, this was a weird one, we had an iPhone send a crash detection message to 911 that it was at exit 9 in Center Road. There was nothing there. The address was someplace further up in Middlesex and they couldn't get hold of the person. So obviously iPhones can do something I wasn't aware of. Um, God. So if you have an iPhone, check that and <laughs> see if that, that does it. Don't break too fast. Uh, yeah. Right. So as far as the, the 89 crash, um, after we got back to the, the station, we did debrief that um, quite extensively with everybody, um, making sure that they were aware that if they desired counseling, um, we would arrange it, um, and that... Um, there's nothing to be um, feel bad about, and um, the next couple of weeks afterwards, I've been checking on everybody that was in there. Thanks for doing that. Um, so sometimes I get a little irate when I bring up things that we need in the department because we need them, and I get some pushback that, well, do we really need it? Can you sharpen a pencil? And I'm a resident here. I'm a taxpayer here. When I say we need stuff for the fire department, we need stuff for the fire department. And uh, that's just it. As far as fast squad, we had 11 total calls. Seven were medical only calls. Our training was uh, ladder operations. It's getting to be pretty soon the wood stoves will be cranking up and mm -hmm. chimney fires will start, so we'll need to be using ladders. Big thing on training is we have um, five members on the department wanting to take firefighting one class. That's a six month class that uh, meets every Wednesday night and then some weekends. Um, we don't pay them for going to that training. Um, that's, that's a big um, commitment from people. Um, and it's a, it's a great thing that we have five uh, relatively new people in the department wanting to take that. Um, repairs, we got a new tailpipe on Rescue One. Purchases, so this is where um, we're, looks like we're going to be getting a 15th person on the department. So my initial cost for uh, gear was based on 14, so we need another um, 2405 20, onto that uh, to get the new person gear. And then um, we're getting gloves. Um, there's two types of gloves we're getting. One is for structural fires, more insulated. The other is um, extrication gloves so when you go up on the inter mainly on the interstate for um, accidents um, trying to deal with car parts and people with big heavy firefighting gloves is cumbersome uh, so a lot of times we end up having to take our gloves off so we can manage things so the extrication gloves uh, make it safer for us to do our job up on the interstate they are fire gloves like everything else are pricey the sets for everybody comes up to 3268 uh, we, we'd like to throw that in with the arpa funds since we really didn't we hadn't budgeted for this year on doing that gloves are considered a consumable uh, because they can get ruined quickly so we're budgeting for that but we didn't budge budget for for this and um, i just think it's an expense we need to do especially with the way people are driving lately, the accidents we're going to, um, it's just, it, it's getting worse yep. for us up on the interstate. We had, one of our guys had to jump over a guardrail because oh. it almost got hit. 
Well, thank you for your service and for all the volunteers. Um, I just heard an article. Have you bought the turnout gear yet? We're, we're getting, we're, we've You're been measured, but yep. we're, we're getting ready to finalize the. Did anyone hear the article about how the turnout gear, they're going to be requiring the turnout gear to be made of something different because of the cancer causing elements in the turnout gear? And I would hate for you to buy a type of turnout gear that we're going to be required to change in like two years. Have you heard about this? I have. There's nothing out there yet. So it's a, uh, you know, here's the requirement, but there's nothing to Okay. To... So there's a possibility that in two years you're going to need to buy new turnout gear. Well, would you have to anyway? How long does that last? It, it, it's 15. 10 years, so it's... Yeah. Um, I mean, I wonder if they'll grandfather it in, but I don't like the idea that this turnout gear, I mean, you're a volunteer, so you're not in your turnout gear every day, like but paid firefighters are. But, you know, people are, I think it's happening because these professional firefighters were getting cancer at a young age and they were attributing it to the turnout gear. There's some anti-fire thing in it that's toxic. Yeah. But the other option is burning. Make, make naked. Right. No, I know. But so, you, so to your knowledge, they don't actually have a new technology. No. Okay. Jeff, I, I'm Peter. I did read somewhere, and I'm sorry I can't remember where, because I've been paying attention to this issue, um, that somebody has developed a spray that you can spray on the existing gear and I don't know whether you just spray it on the outside or the inside or how you do it but it doesn't totally eliminate that exposure but it reduces it dramatically so if that that comes to pass that's something we should look into okay this is the first I've heard of it you heard anything about that no uh, okay I think I said something a couple of meetings ago and I heard it, and, and I trust that you're more of an authority than yep. CBS News or NBC, but it was on there, and, and they were talking about it. But I don't know if that means it's coming. If you don't know about it, you don't know about it. So, but, but, I, I, they're, they're, it, the, the, but, but the discussion um, on the news, which I put a lot of faith in, has, has been out on huh, what Peter's talking about. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at that and see what I can find out. I, I haven't gotten anything from District 6, who's our, basically our county. Over yeah, I mean, they, yeah, I would think, I don't know. I just heard it, like, that they were, it was, like, so alarming that it was, like, some ridiculous thing that was going to cause, like, it was going to also be required of volunteer fire departments, right. right, that can't afford this stuff. Exactly. Right? And it was, like, you know, and I was, like, oh, my God, that's us. And, um yeah uh so anyway I, but i don't see anything online i'm just looking to see if there's any kind of like oh in two years you're gonna blah 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 but whatever it might be worth just doing a little research to see if there's something that i mean just so we know and we're prepared both, both companies that we dealt yeah, with it's, have a, it's, a, it's a national problem i mean you know this isn't needless to say this isn't just the state of Vermont or the town of middlesex so oh i know somewhere there bound to be lots of people working on this problem. We just need to keep our eyes open and pay attention and be yeah. aware that exactly what you're concerned about, Liz, could happen in two years from now. We could be told we have six months to replace all our turnout gear or something like that. Who knows? Yep. I'm sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. The, both companies that we're dealing with are the national, nationally made okay. companies. So it's um, they're going to be hit first with yep. charge to coming up with something. Um, and then being able to get it out. I mean, it's, I, I think our wait time is like eight, six to eight weeks on getting the gear. Okay. Um, so do I have- So we probably have to make a motion to increase the amount of the ARPA money to include the gloves and an extra set of outfits. Do you well, think- I have a total of you. It comes up to 44, seven, seven seventy eight twenty nine plus shipping now. And what was it before? Like before thirty. It was, 40, I it was thirty-nine thousand something. something. Thirty-nine seven hundred five zero okay. four. All right. Is there? Do you guys want to talk about this, or does someone want to make a motion? I just have one quick question. Sure. Gloves. If the the actually, is there an action likely on this? 
action your possible. Your gear is every 10 years how often the gloves need to be replaced. And I'm asking this just for, from being on the budget committee and needing to know if we need to add some things to the capital investment. We don't have a, a deadline. On the, it usually, they go before the gear goes because right. they get wet, right. especially in the wintertime, you get wet and frozen. And um, it's usually, we replace them somewhere around the three to four year mark um, because it's leather and you just, it's the nature of the beast. And I, I go through work gloves in about two years and I wear them a lot more. So, have we, have we, Jeff, expended the money which we had allocated to the fire department from ARPA? Didn't we have some leftover money in there? Originally it was 50000 and we we came in with a 39.7. Um, and then right. we're, we're getting the extra body and the gloves. So we're still way below the, the 50,000. Yeah. Right, that's what I thought. So with that, I will make the motion that we approve that increase. Okay. Second. Okay, Zara seconds. Peter moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Start spending, Jeff. Yes, I, and I thank you, Jeff, to you and the team. Our, our Yes, absolutely. Thank you to you and the team. And is there something we can do to acknowledge the team or let them know we care? What would you think they would like? Uh, just supporting us with getting the equipment that we request. Okay. That's the. We'll do that's our best. biggest thing. Need right now. For right now, it is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're leaving. Okay. Do you want me to stay? No, yeah. I mean I guess, but no. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't have to. You can go home. You can enjoy yourself in the sun. Go right ahead. Every, every time I come to these meetings, I normally go to the, our our meeting, but we had our meeting last week because Eric's away. Yep. Um, and I tell them how supportive the select board is. Has really the last couple of years has really our relationship has really melded well. Well, good. I'm and glad. I think we can see it in the numbers. We're up to 15. Yep. The numbers in responders, um, and it's not just because we're we're almost $11 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we're so generous. Clearly, <laughs> that's not a big incentive. So, so well, that's, but, really good. that's really good news, Jeff. Thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah, that's sure. great. And thank, thank them yeah. for their service and all the. I can't believe this. This is a huge amount of work that they did. Yeah. So thank you. And now you can ignore my email too. Oh, oh, and, and the, 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 I have the list of road culvert cleanouts. We're working on getting people to do that. Awesome, thank you. I've contacted everybody so far that's contacted okay. me. Okay, so our next okay. agenda <laughs> item is it's a big one. Um, so I think it would be helpful, Sandy, if you wouldn't mind maybe presenting to uh, on behalf of the. Um, Middlesex Town Hall Committee, if you wouldn't mind um, sharing what we've sort of worked on over the last couple of weeks and what we are proposing to the board, would be great. Dave, you're on. And Dave, do you want to here? sit up here too? <clears throat> Plenty of room. Join the committee. So, and then Peter can hear us better because okay. I think this is the microphone that I think he's hearing out of. So, okay. put that there. Thanks. Thank you for that. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> um, the Middlesex Town Hall Committee, which is myself and Dave Magida and Liz Scharf, <clears throat> have been working with um, the architects that the town hired and the newly hired um, construction manager, EF Wall, to come up with better uh, budget estimates in anticipation of a budget vote on Election Day in November of 2024. Um, and, you know, the long story short is, unfortunately, the estimate with sharpened pencils and a little more real detail about what things will actually cost, um, in particular site work, um, rather than just being estimates, site work based on, oh, this is a small site where you've got to get big machines in here and dig around and dig up the, you know, parts of the foundation. Things like that cost more than we had anticipated. There are also additional costs that we hadn't sort of factored in, like, oh, we're going to need a place to work during this time. Um, you know, uh, temporary office space, things like that. And some items are just more expensive than we had anticipated. Long and short of it is, 
we still don't know exactly what this is going to cost. Um, the most recent estimates are closer to $3 million instead of around $2 million. Um, and after sort of looking at what does that include, where do we think we can cut, um, we think we can cut it down some. We think we can get grants for some of it as well. It's all uncertain, but we believe we can. Think we can do some fundraising. We would like to the <coughs> select board to support a um, putting a bond uh, or approval of a bond on the ballot in November for two and a half million dollars. And then we will continue to work to try and, you know, really hone in on, you know, what is the, the real cost? Can we cut more? Um, you know, how can we, we manage and, you know, what grant money can we get and so yes. on. And, you know, long and short is that, you know, it's a big amount of money. We recognize there's a lot of demands on town funds right now. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, with budgets and so on, um, but also fundamentally the town supported going forward and figuring out what this would cost and to bring it forward to a bond and we just ask that this be presented to the voters to make that decision. And I'll just add that a lot of the costs that are associated especially with the site work and the civil work is related to the ADA. And it has to do with, you know, being able to get um, a wheelchair ramp in and parking. So it's not as simple as like, let's just put in a new lift, right? Um, and so, you know, we, it, you know, my mind goes to, well, let's just do a few things, right? And, and, um, and, you know, we, we, we could, like, we know we have to get a new heating system, right? So we can use the MERP money and, and do that. Um, and just do what the recommendations are from the MERP grant, which did come in um, with recommendations. Um, and, you know, or my mind goes to, well, let's just, you know, do just this instead. And it's, it, it's more complicated from a, it's almost like, well, if you're going to do that, you might as well do the bigger project because you're going to have to do too much stuff to get in. And, and cutting 500000 could be really detrimental and be something that requires more maintenance and more cost in the short term. Um, Dave, I, I think you're probably better at articulating that whole piece around you know, where is it that we potentially could cut? Um, but I, I need everyone to know that like, we were really like disappointed, right? We're like, really? Like, you know, you think about like your own house, right? Oh, I'm gonna do a major renovation on my house, right? Oh, it might cost two or 300,000. And you're like, well, how is this building any different from my house? It's just a little bigger. How is it costing 10 times more, right? That's the mindset that I think of, but there's a lot more complications when it is a municipal building, when there are requirements, when there are ADA requirements, um, when you know we need more vault space, um, when our bathrooms have to be ADA and everything around it, you know, has to be you know accessible, um, and that we know we need more space, right? We definitely need more space for the folks who have offices downstairs and. And so it's, you know, for us, it's a, you know, it, it's just sort of too bad, right? Like we're feeling really bad about the fact that this seems to be so expensive. Um, so Dave, I don't know if you want to speak to more about like what 3 million does versus like maybe what 2 million does. Like the trap we don't want to fall into is that we try to get the budget down by taking things out of the project that we know need to be done, but may not be, need to be done right now. What we don't want to do is five years from now, tear up work that we had done now um, because we didn't get the whole aspect of that done. If 
particular. I hope I'm clear on that. Right, like the, We're, like the septic and all that. Right, that's a huge we, project. We could leave that alone. Or we could do partial work and then dig it all up again in five years because they know the problem with it, as opposed to going in now and doing it the right way. Uh, commercial buildings like this, as Liz was saying, do need to follow a whole set of code issues that are not required for a resident. And that can be everything from the electrical and plumbing system, the heating system, there's a whole set of rules that we have no choice about covering. Uh, I assure you that our little group here, teamed with the architects and the engineers and the construction managers, we want to get the project cost down. If, and I think we can do that. We're not going to get it down to a million and a half dollars. That's just not going to happen. It's not going to get down to two million, perhaps. If, if it is going down to two million, it would be with some significant changes. But we feel confident that working together, we can keep it under two and a half. And that two and a half million will include grant money. Uh, Liz can speak better than that. It will include other funding sources than just the loan. Uh, we're not also going to, we're not going to allow ourselves to be trapped in cutting costs just in the things that people see. It might be a little nice to have, like refinishing this floor. Uh, we want to be able to take care of things that uh, need to be done, but the tendency in projects like this that come in over budget is people go to the finishes. That's not structurally what you, that's not how you want to attack an issue with a building. So we will go through all the, the different aspects of the project, seeing can we save some money that is not only presently beneficial, but is not going to hurt us down the road. Yes, Peter. So a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I think it's very important that in presenting this to the town, we say that giving the authority for this bond does not necessarily mean that we're going ahead with the project. Isn't that correct? There's going to be one more step where we actually approve the project. So just because they're authorizing this bond, we haven't spent the money. I think a lot of people feel, I've heard from a few people, once we do the bond vote, then it's like, you know, water going over the dam. It's just go ahead and spend the money. So I think we need to get that point across. And I think the other point we need to get across is, and I agree with everything you said, by the way, Dave, if we're gonna do this project, we've gotta be careful that we do it right, be as cost effective as we can to do it right. But I think the other thing we need to tell people is, yes, that's a huge number, whether it's two and a half million or three million, but we need to be honestly, the best we can project what that bond if that is the real cost and if we get authority to go ahead, how's that gonna affect people's taxes? And we need to do it before the November bond vote, not after, in my opinion. Sarah. Okay, I just wanna just keep people in, on track of how the question is going to appear. The question is going to appear, it has two parts. Shall the uh, general obligation bonds of the town of Middlesex and Mount not to exceed Can you come that? over here and talk oh, because I think Peter can't so hear. So I've, you know, I've, I've been going, uh, Rob, our town attorney and I have been going over how this question looks since we don't have much time to, to fool around with the question wording. It's gotta be to the Secretary of State's office in two days. So we have two figures that the board has to look at tonight. One is that the bond, what the bond is, what you're asking for, and the other is the project cost. It's because the question is framed this way. Shall the general obligation bonds of the town of Middlesex in an amount not to exceed X, subject to reduction from receipt of available state and federal grants and aid be issued for the purpose of financing the cost of renovating Middlesex Town Hall at an estimated cost of X? So, Peter, I'm not sure that you're entirely right about the fact that the board has not decided that the, the it's not going to go back to the town to ask them whether or not to do the town hall. This is the question. If the board decides that, to put this question up there, and then if the voters approve it, you've got a project. Right, but we don't have to get the bond. So, like, we don't have to, like, we're not 
signing no, you up don't for have, the bond. You don't have to get the bond. But right. Peter's saying that this is a two-step process, that we're just asking for these bond funds, but we may not go with town hall. That's a very confusing process. No, I don't think that's true. I think you're right, and I think, right. I'm not sure that's what he and was saying. We're going no, to have I'm sorry. I, did, I, 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 I misspoke on that, but the, I, just, I just want people to really understand how this process goes forward, because... You know, the other thing I've heard people saying is, well, everybody talks that we'll be able to get grants, but we're not going to go, we're not going to know what the grants are, or it's likely we're not going to know what the grants are by the time we have to vote on this bond. Well, that's why the question's phrased the way it is. The question is, is statutory, is phrased, you know, pending certain grants, this is what it is. So we got two figures. We got to figure how much is this renovation going to cost? How much are you going to ask for in bonds? Okay, in, in a bond. So that's clear. And then you're going to go through the bond process in October, including a public hearing where you get to discuss all these other issues. And that has to be held, I think, within 10 days of the vote. Okay? Yeah, but all, all, I'm, saying, all I'm saying, guys, is we're, we're hopeful we're going to get a lot of help with this project. But we're not going to know about that, at least I don't believe we are, by the time we have to vote. We, well, that's concerning we know what I know. we know what MERP is going to potentially recommend that we do, and then we are we're supposed to abide by what they recommend. Do you have any more detail on that, Lowry Sharp? Um, it's I think what did I say? A hundred thousand dollars in total. That was for the fire department. I thought no, that was for. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't come. With those numbers. Okay, yeah. So uh, I haven't looked at it's, what. It's under, it's 100 or less for each building. Okay, so that's not good, right? Like that's not enough. Um, and um, I mean, it's enough to do what they're recommending we do, right? But it's not giving us new windows downstairs. It's not, um, you know, giving us a roof so that we can do weatherization. Like it's not, uh, it's not really going towards anything but what they recommended, which is, you know, heat pumps and um, blown insulation and I don't know what else. If, if I, I don't know if the cost of the insulation is exceeds what Merp rec, what that assessment recommended, we don't get reimbursed for that. I don't know. Yeah, okay. I have to find out from. Um, Probably not. <laughs> there's, there's a lot. I mean, th this just okay. came out, yeah. and I'm, sh you know, Sam Lash is working on it, and um, she did send us an email, a second email, and then she said there were some attachments, but she didn't include them. And I emailed her. And I said, "Were you supposed to have attachments?" And so I, I have to look at what she sent us. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not going to be 500000 yeah. That's the reality. Yeah. I'm just curious. I mean, obviously, you guys have been doing a lot of work for this. Are there other options that we are entertaining at all? Well, there's. Um, I need to get back in touch with the people who we did apply for um, a community development block grant. And it was, they, they came back. They, we didn't apply for it. We did a preliminary, like a pre-app. I mean, like, other than this specific building, because didn't it say, like, tearing it down and rebuilding? We, oh, oh, that. Something million at, dollars, yeah. or are there other locations that we've looked at? Or? We looked at the option of building new. Yeah. And the associated demolition of this building that would be required. Four million. And we also looked at uh, how can we do the project with maybe a larger addition, and we turned out we actually need it. But there's no other locations or anything like well, that. Well, we'll I mean, so there's the all the kinds school. of other options, right? Like there's, I mean, so so here's here's what we're, here's sort of the parameters. One is that we were charged with sort of like, we have this building, mm -hmm. we have, it has a lot of def defaults and deficiencies, and um, this, they've had these def faults and deficiencies for years and years and years, right? And so we've kind of been like, finally, we have to do something and, and see what we come up with. So that is what we have done. And we have come up with a number that we believe isn't tenable, right? Or not, it isn't something that we want to go ahead with. But we do believe that with two and a half million, we could probably do a lot of things that would improve this building. 
it might not get us to the glory building that we envisioned it was going to be, but it could get us, you know, for the next 30 years, well, right? Mildew, mildew <laughs> right. Remediation would be good. So. so, so that's what we're here for. We're here to say this is, you know, this is what an option is. So, if the board said no, we don't want to do this, we might go back to VIA and say, okay, we need to think about this for March vote like what is it that we might be able to do for March like let's go back to the drawing board and see what we can come up with but let me just finish there are are there other options sure there's we have a, um, a terrible town shed right that needs to be replaced maybe we do some grandiose town shed slash town hall our town plan says we want the government to be in the village so that would have to change like there's a lot of things that might have to change this building you know, what would we do with this building? Um, it still has a lot of deficiencies. And school, we don't know what's happening with school, right? It could be that nobody moves to Middlesex because it's too expensive, there's no children, and suddenly we have a vacant school building. I'm like, oh, well, we could have done our things here, but we don't know that right now. So really what we have been charged with is spending the last year and a half coming to this point that we voted on in March mm -hmm. to say, we're gonna do this study and this is where we are right now. What would we know about the school? Oh, years. Years from now. Years. Okay. And yeah. we, we did prior to this study, we did a feasibility study. What would it cost to build a new building? Mm -hmm. Something that, a functioning new building, assuming it's on property that the town owns and doesn't need site work. So you're kind of trying to compare apples to apples. And that was more expensive than rehabbing this and that would still be more expensive than rehabbing this building similarly you know a bigger addition onto this building was more expensive so when we got those pieces back and we shared those with the select board this was more than a year ago now we said okay deeper dive into the least expensive most efficient option is to rehab this building so let's really spend our time and effort into looking at really what does that cost and that's what the effort that we've been doing for the last and I can tell you how much it would cost yep. so um, I can't tell you what it would be per person but that's something that you wizards over there could do when you look at like the cost of something um, but if we were to do a debt service of and this was for um, this was for 2.9 million because that's what I originally asked um, but if you let's just let's just let's just cut three million, even though it says two point nine million in here, because then you can say, okay, well, what would a two million dollar bond look like, and vice versa. So um, the um, the the interest rate has gone down, so that's good from the previous time that I got this quote. Um, but for a thirty year bond at four point oh three percent rate at two point nine million. Starting in um, starting in um, an annual debt service, starting in 2026, because they kind of do this. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, starting in 2026. Well, 2025 is a first payment of 29,000. 2026, the next payment is 116,000. 2027 is our first real principal and interest that's two two hundred and eleven thousand and then it progressively goes down because of amortization so the first you know 10 years you're looking at high 100s um, and by year uh, 2055 when half of us won't even be here um, you're down to a hundred two uh, thousand so um, so so you're looking at, if we had a $2 million budget, let's say by the time this comes around, our budget will be about $2 million, that's a 10% increase for a bond. We won't have the fire station bond anymore, which is only, what, 40 or 50 on that? What's the fire? I don't even know what the uh, fire station I bond is. I think we is. pay, I want to say we pay 40 twice a year on it. Okay, so like maybe 80000 yeah. So, um, oh yeah, actually, he does have this, he does have a um, twice a year, uh, I yeah. think, payment on to this, pay too. Twice a year with the yeah, I think, he, it looks like you can do both, but maybe not, yeah. So, um, anyway, um, 
It's so it's just about getting it on the ballot, right? And then the townspeople will vote. The, the townspeople will vote, okay, yes. And I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's this is <laughs> really decision. what, right, we're not making that decision right now. And the other thing, too, is, is that even if the townspeople do vote for it, we may discover that we can't, like, what, and this is Sarah, it comes to the question about how the ballot is written. Let's say the townspeople <laughs> voted for 2.5 million but we realized that we couldn't do the full renovation. Would this allow us to do partial renovation? Or because we said in order to do a $3.5 million job, which we wouldn't be doing because we wouldn't have found the money to do that, instead we're going to do a partial renovation, is that allowed? Can you come over here again? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that I consider one part of this legally binding and the second part uh, informative of this question. The legally binding part is shall the voters agree to participate in that they will, because you're, you're indebting future taxpayers of yes. Middlesex, not just the people who are here, all the people in 2054, people will be paying on a bond that they were like, what the hell, I didn't know we were paying on it. So that's why it's such an important vote. And the estimated cost is just, I think, a general idea to give people of what you're talking about. So, okay. I mean, they need to know how much is this building gonna cost and how much are we gonna go into a debt for? Just Can like you read the question again? Yeah. So, it's, shall general obligation bonds of the town of Middlesex in an amount not to exceed X comma, subject to reduction from the receipt of available state and federal grants and aid be issued for the purpose of financing the cost of renovating Middlesex Town Hall at an estimated cost of X. Okay, estimated cost. <coughs> Would you like to say something, Victor? <laughs> Please. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a, you know, I'm not in favor of this. Yeah. I'll tell you right now. I mean, it's, you know, without saying, right from the get-go, I wasn't. Yep. A lot of this stuff, you're telling me like you're surprised here today that you didn't know you had to do this stuff. There's some of us knew it at the beginning, and we told Peter that, and he was kind of sarcastic to me and that thing. But that's all over the video. But anyways, my biggest point is hope is not a good strategy. All you people have said tonight is hope. And hope mm -hmm. is not a good strategy. I don't think anybody can argue with that. Mm -hmm. And I just, I mean, I just think it's ludicrous to go and ask voters after all the, all the money that we just spent mm -hmm. on our taxes and the money that we got coming up uh, for all the work that we got uh, to do to our roads. And people will say, oh, well, you're going to get that money back. Well, we might, we might not, but even if we do, a taxpayer doesn't get it back. Have you ever seen your taxes go down? No. No. But so, Vic, can I just clarify uh, that we, the voters voted to spend money to do this project that yeah. we are doing right now. So we are the messengers giving you a message that you don't like, and that's okay. But we're not sitting here going, yay, we will, I mean, this is, I'm just saying, this is our message. Our message is that it is expensive. And we didn't, I think, she maybe misspoke when she said we didn't know we would have these extra costs. We did know that we'd have these extra costs. I thought those costs would be built into their quote, and it's not. It's like, not. those things aren't built into the quote. Those are like, oh no, those are extra. We need to, those have to be added in on a separate spreadsheet. And, though, and I'm like, where are those costs in here? And they're like, oh no, those aren't in here. That's where it goes to the two, because this only comes to what, 2.6 million or something? Thank only. You for saying that. And that it's the 3.2 is all these other things like, oh, the town has to set aside 10% in case there's something like you pull a wall and you find out that it's filled with asbestos, right? And you need to mitigate it. So the town has to have that money set aside for this. Um, you know, so those are things that, that, you know, are add up to this cost that 
you know, I didn't realize weren't going to be built into their like final number or well, whatever their estimate. So we did know that like, you know, there might be moving costs because we don't know where we might have to have a trailer set up here or you know, there is the option that some work can be done while they're still in here or that, you know, the vault is open a couple days a week that people can come into if they need it. Um, so this isn't, there's never going to be a good time to do this. It's only going to get more expensive. And I think, you know, we are, this is what we're presenting tonight. That's all. All right. We fully agree that hope is not a method. What you're seeing is a result of much more detailed work. I don't believe that. Uh, this is a, is a lot more detailed now than the time that we presented several months ago. Did you see what, you haven't seen the spreadsheet that you, they have no, line item by I've line item. Here. Yeah, well there you can see a five page spreadsheet of every cost associated with everything mm -hmm. and comparisons to what BAA's um, estimate was. Yes, sir. I'm going to say, you might not like it, but if you know something, it, then volunteer a, a year and a half ago so you can help guide them. Two, what? I'm going to say, hey, you could have volunteered for this committee if you knew had, had all this knowledge and saved them a lot of work. I'm just saying that. Um, I, the other thing I'm going to say is I really don't think that the voters are going to vote for this, but I don't want to keep the voters from voting for this. So. I understand that point. And, and, and the third thing that I'm going to say is, in working in this um, building, it's a lovely old building, it smells of mold and mildew. Uh, the, you can't flush the toilet very often. <laughs> like, there, are, there, are work, there are concerns about human beings working in this building that I have um, from other places that I've worked versus mm -hmm. this building. Um, yes, Peter. So here's what it is for me, and I, and I understand that I may have misspoken when I said it was a two-step process, but it is in a way to me a two-step process. Just because we get the authority to get this bond doesn't mean we actually do it. We will have a chance to see how much outside money we can bring in and before we, before we finally sign a contract. Um, I think we owe the voters the opportunity to vote on this. We've spent all this money, time, and you guys have put in a tremendous amount of effort to get to where we are. I think it would be a mistake to say, oh, well, it's too much. We don't think we should go ahead. The voters may say that to us, but it shouldn't be up to us. And I think we owe the voters a chance to decide and we need to do the best job we can to explain it to the voters how it works, what it's likely to cost them in terms of future taxes, all those, all those issues. And maybe, maybe with a little luck, by November we'll have a little better idea of how much outside money we can bring in. But I think we definitely need to do what we need to do to get it on the morning so the voters can vote on it. And I will make the motion that we do that. Uh, and I guess I'm thinking it's $2.5 million for a $3 million project. But maybe we should change okay. those numbers. Yes, Dorinda. Um, mine's a couple comments and probably a couple questions. Um, I think we all want this to pass, but I have to tell you, I don't think it will mm -hmm. as of right now. I mean, this all started before we had our second flood. Mm -hmm. We are deeply in debt. We still aren't done having any idea what the second flood is going to cost us. We're already up to 1.6 million in debt from the second flood, and we still have many more invoices to come in. Um, the money is coming in from FEMA extremely slow. Mm -hmm. um, and. You know, now we know we've got to wait for the funds to come in probably a little bit longer. Um, so with that said, uh, two questions is, what would it hurt to wait to go to a March vote when we might have a little more information okay. and can better 
Um, and the second thing, will this, we incur, I know that prices of building and all, but just in terms of the design phase or whatever phase we're in now, is there more debt being incurred as we speak? No. So we're done with that phase. We're done, yeah. So the people that do the, the construction management are getting paid like $10,000 or whatever it is to do just this piece, knowing that that's it, right? Um, same with VIA, they, they are contracted for whatever it was, 40,000, 45,000. That's what we voted on, that 65,000. 65, 000, yeah. right. 65, 65. So, so that is, that's all that, that we're doing. We're not gonna pay for anything else. Like there's things like, they're like, oh, we should be doing construction permits. And I'm like, no, we're not doing any of that yet, right? Um, so in answer to your question about March, um, the problem with March is that the costs that they're giving us now are likely not to go down they would go up and so um they they start in december and january to get contracts and so if we are passed in november then we start to work on getting um, workers for the spring and secondly we decided that november would get the most people voting so the most people to have the option of whether or not they want to vote for this. There's going to be a million people voting. Mm -hmm. Everyone in town is going to be voting at the presidential. And okay. this gives that, them the opportunity. Not everybody comes in March. And mm -hmm. we want there to be as many people as possible. Yes. Sir. What happens if, like we believe, the voters say no? Then yeah. um, so then we could go back and sharpen our pencils again and say, OK, well, um, or maybe we say, all right, well, Let's look at a whole brand new scenario, right? Like let's look at a town shed combined with town offices, or let's look at um, a FECTO home, and <laughs> we sell this, and we put a FECTO home next to the fire department, and that's where Sarah works. Um, those still aren't cheap, according to, I said that to VIA, I'm like, well, unfortunately, that's not cheap either. That's the, she said that would run you like in the millions because of the whole ADA business and and wheelchair accessibility and all the things that you need to have for like compliance. She's like, it's not as cheap as you think. Probably make more money selling this building. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, let me answer Peter and then I'll get to you. Peter. I made a motion list. Okay, but let me just get finish uh, more conversation from Vic. It's, it's a mute point, but and I think I asked you this at uh, town meeting was there a, was there any concern or did any did we ever look into selling this building and I think you said no uh, yeah I don't think we did you look did, into selling I'm aware it. yeah no I, mean, I don't know what we could get for it 700,000 oh my god are you kidding me 500 no. 200 millions of millions oh there's well, completely inadequate septic for this building yeah I don't think you'd get millions <laughs> I think I you'd think be real surprised at what rich people are The sophisticated buyer is going to look at this. Mm -hmm. and they're going to come with a list similar to this. Yeah. On What's own. that now? A sophisticated buyer is going to come up with these kind of cost estimates they do on their own prior to spending whatever kind of money. Do you want to see that cost estimate, Vic? Just out of curiosity. Because it's not this. It's, it's much more detailed. And like you're like, what the heck? Why does this cost so much money? I mean, and I know nothing about like the costs of this stuff. You know, and and I and I did. My brain goes to, but my house would cost two hundred thousand. Why does this cost ten times? So I second Vic's motion. Um, I don't see there's any reason why we shouldn't. You mean Peter's? Peter's, so, Peter's sorry, I second Peter's motion. Okay. Because I don't see any reason why the voters shouldn't have a voice in this. Okay. Are there any other conversations or comments about this? So do we have the motion? We well, the motion is for two point five million dollar bond based on a. I would say a $3.25 million program project. Can we still discuss? I'll my, I'll my uh, we can still discuss, yes. Okay. It, but, you, but my fear is, and it's not a fear, but what has happened like with the schools, when mm -hmm. we did the school bond mm -hmm. and stuff, and we get into, we contract into the, mm -hmm. the building, Oh, we sharpened our pencils and we're going to do it for two and a half million. And then it comes out. Oh, it came out three and a half million. We're awful sorry, but you got to pay it anyways. Well, what did they talk about that with that, Dave? Happen. What did they talk about that? There's some sort of. 
don't want to say guaranteed maximum but price. Yeah, guaranteed maximum price. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. They uh, the right. construction management team comes up with a guaranteed maximum price. The construction say that again. EF Wall, the construction management firm has, has will set up what's called a guaranteed maximum price before we sign anything. Unless well, but but they can that can be altered by change order. That we approve. Right. So and again, we set that also part of like our money is setting aside something in case there's like, you know, oh, we just found asbestos. And there's a burial ground out there. There's an owner's <laughs> contingency being held that we control. There's an estimating contingency that the CM holds. But none of the contingency can be spent without our authorization. Right, but if you're up against the wall, you got to authorize it. Well, and what does that mean that there's a so so then they get to that number and then they no, stop? No, it means that everybody no. acknowledges this design process is going to miss something. Right. It just happens. And, and they're going to be rather than come back here and say we need more money, mm -hmm. the budget is built with a contingency, so that in the middle of construction we can go out and spend another two thousand dollars out of that contingency to get something done. And also, Dorinda, to answer your question, I think, I could be totally wrong, but I think that um, if we have a bond approved, access to other monies, is they're more willing to give you money when you know you've already gotten the big part of it. That was the problem with the CDBG grant, was like, you don't have anything yet, right? Like, we're not going to award you 700000 for ADA work when you don't have anything already lined up. Right, so if we have something lined up, we can go back and we can say, okay, these are the commitments we already have, and then they, they're more willing to talk. I can't make any promises about that, but like I do know that there are funds for ADA, but they're not gonna wanna fund it for something that we don't have the other money for it, or we can't complete the whole project for it. You know, let me say that, you know, if, if we had the money and you know it wasn't gonna quadruple our taxes or whatever raise you know raise them up out of reason I would be all for this I mean I, I mean I'm not I mean I don't know I, I mean I I'm it's not, not gonna quadruple your taxes but it is gonna make people's ta I mean of course it's gonna make people's taxes go up the municipal piece is <clears> gonna go up but it is also we're almost done because of when I talked with the bond bank too is that there may be a one year or so that we overlap with the fire department, but then the fire department will, because this doesn't in earnest start till 2027. And I think the fire department expires in 30. So maybe three years then, yeah, to overlap. But but it goes down every year, doesn't it? I mean, we the, always pay the same principal, the interest portion. But the interest portion goes down, yeah. yeah. But, yes. the, it, but the other thing I think, and I could be wrong, and which is a totally different things, but when we get a reappraisal. Which has been delayed by a year. Right. Which, so I, when you were saying 27, I was saying, yay. Yeah. Right. But then you said 25. I mean, I personally believe that that's going to help because I think, I think it's really going to bring a lot of, the, the whole grand list is going to come in line. Right. I think it's out of proportion right now, and so that is a lot of fears of, mm -hmm. of quite a few people in town. When you say, mm -hmm. you know, you're talking, I think you said something, and correct me if, you know, it's like going to be $300 originally for a $300,000 like house. A, yeah, it was like a two, that was on a what, a $1.5 million bond or something like that? And no, I, I forget what it was. was. Well, I don't remember. But I, yeah, yeah, I understand you. Wouldn't. Yeah. But, I think that's going to change. Yeah, I mean, and if it does, that's great. Ain't cheap. But in the meantime, it isn't so great. Right. Well, twenty twenty five. There's not really a payment. It's a small payment. It's that base small payment, and then twenty twenty six would be a hundred. That was on two point nine. Okay, guys, let's just back up. That was on a two point nine million dollar bond, so it would be. Um, Two hundred thousand is um, what is that divided by three? 
What, what did I say it was? Six, uh, you want yeah, so sixty-five times two, so it'd be like a hundred. A two million dollar bond would be like a hundred and thirty-five thousand per year. Per year, but don't don't start writing that yeah. in the notes because this we're looking at two point five anyway. What? At it's at two point five, right? So you have to right. Don't yeah. don't put anything in the notes about the the cost, but the um, but for two point nine million, it's um, what I just said. Let me just repeat that number for you, Sarah. It's okay. We can talk about it later. Mm. Got it. Two point nine in the first year in earnest. It's two hundred and eleven thousand. Yeah, two hundred eleven four four six at four point oh three percent. And that would be twenty twenty six, right? Twenty twenty seven. Twenty twenty seven. Yeah. And how much does it dollar? Well, we don't know because you won't know. I mean, right now, a penny on the tax rate raises twenty three thousand dollars, but that'll change when yeah, the grand list change, changes. Right? Yeah. So Peter's made a motion. Zara has seconded it. Is there any further discussion? Okay. So, all those in favor of voting for Peter's motion, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, so Vic is opposed. Three people say aye. The ayes have it. It will go on the November election, and we shall take it from there. Can I just make sure before, well, before yeah. it's all fresh in our minds? So we're going to say, shall general obligation bonds in the town of Middlesex and the amount not to exceed $2.5 million, subject to reduction, blah, 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 at an estimated cost of three point two five million. Yes. That's the motion. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Yep. Alrighty. Thank you everyone for that conversation, that hard conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And thank you, Sandy and Dave, for your countless hours yeah. on this. Um all righty. So where are we now? We are at approving a letter. Oh, we have Adrian here for this. <laughs> Approving a letter confirming the town's intent to participate so in the 2024 sorry, emergency watershed program. Okay, so I have an official letter. And authorizing the select board chair to sign. That would be you. And um, did you give them a copy of the letter, Sarah? I did it because you just gave, I gave them a copy of the letter I wrote. Okay, so this is the official letter. All righty. I am the administrative contact. Okay. Brian Voigt from Central Vermont Regional okay. Planning is the, he wants to be the yep. technical contact Perfect. instead of Larry. So this is the same EWP program for this year's flood. Yep. The difference right now, and when you approved it last year, it was the same, is this covers 75, 100% uh -huh. of the engineering cost and 75% of the, construction cost and the homeowner has to kick in the other 25 percent yes. i don't know what happened last year to make it a hundred percent but maybe it'll happen again um i've had three people contact me already homeowners who are chomping at the bit yeah. for this and i'm hoping because we have this whole system in place that the people that apply this year it's going to go much more quickly would you make sure that you tell them about the 25 percent though yes because my yeah, right I, so what i'm going to do is post in front porch form that this is a possibility and if they think they have any remote possibility that they might qualify to let me know the state engineer will come and evaluate their property and either say yes or no and then we'll go okay. from there and, and yes. i wouldn't even say last year we so we there could be some hope i no, wouldn't I won't, share I won't any say of that, that either yeah right. yeah so you are responsible for 25 percent because otherwise they'll sign up and they'll be like you didn't tell me that no was no i it is 75 percent 25 percent now okay so that's what perfect anybody on that on the great brook for example there are three properties on the great brook that are in the 2023 and it doesn't have to be that your bridge was washed out. It could be that your property's washed yes. out. Yes. No, it's mostly mostly what they do is stream protection, stream bank protection, and debris removal. Okay. And for this year's project, all but one of them, that's what it was. There was that dam on um, Zidane Road that the guy then decided he wanted to do himself. It got too big. But, but it is everything to protect else, your house. This is to protect for imminent danger in the future. So. Pardon my ignorance here. It's okay. 
it's like on that great brook, and I don't know how many people are aware of it, but like a lot of that water that came off, like all the hell, you know, because that's above it and came off. Well, it comes off other, center road, comes right off yes, our property. Comes, yeah. Yes, I was just going to say, well, it comes <laughs> off center road, like yeah. down the panhandle, if yeah. you will. That did a tremendous amount of, uh, of erosion. Yeah. So if their property is in imminent danger of flooding again, then they might, they're likely to qualify. Mm -hmm. And again, I am not the engineer. I went to visit someone on Brook Road because she really wanted me to come. And I said, man, this looks really bad, but I'm not an engineer. You know, I'm right. doing the administrative stuff here. Right. Okay. Do you I'm know, um, I just, I, one of my former colleagues who lives in Duxbury lives on a private shared driveway with one of those giant culverts that washed out and they've been quoted $125,000 to repair it. Would this program, or is it that, it's not it's for not that this, kind of, no, no. Yeah, I sent a message yeah. to the state to see, do they, is there any program that yeah. could help them? Well, there's someone on Brook Road. It's like the, do yeah. it's like the Warren Road, yeah. that culvert. Yeah. yeah. Well, there which would cost a lot of money. There are two people on Brook Road in Middlesex whose bridges have washed out and 100, 150,000. Yeah, yeah, bridge yeah. is an interesting. Yes, Dorinda. Um, somebody's here saying Charlie's saying our bridge does not qualify, Vic. This program will only help if you your if home. your home is in imminent danger. Oh, it's oh, Ella. It's Ella O'Casey saying that. Okay. All righty, but there is the option of a state buyout if that is necessary. For her, yeah. For her, yeah. She did That's not qualify last bad. year for this program. For the EWP. She tried for EWP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, there's also those hazard mitigation grants that are due August 30th, but those also cover flooded homes. And I know nothing about those. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I guess I asked you about the EW. I asked you about that, but then I got to think about the EWP because the hazard mitigation. I wonder if that it wouldn't cover a culvert, but in terms of, um, I don't know if L has filled this out, but it's hazard mitigation pre-application forms. They're due August 30th, and they do cover things 100. percent Yeah, but I don't think that that's for a private person's bridge. It is. It is not for a bridge for a private person's home. No, this is a bridge to get to the yeah, home. Yeah, so no. Okay, but but yeah. for the home, for these other homeowners, right, that are talking about. That's because our house is getting close and closer to the water, mm -hmm. and like you know, so then they what they'll do is they'll put all the riprap up so that they're protecting the property between the river and the house. Google hazard mitigation pre-application grants. Yeah. Because and add it to my wealth of knowledge, I'm so right? Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No, it's good. A year ago, I knew nothing. Hazard mitigation pre-application grants. Um, I, those are due August thirtieth. That's soon. But they're super easy to fill out. It's it's only a few questions. Um, and then someone so would, the would individuals location. have to fill the grants out yes, they, as a they, they can, if if their if their home is in danger they absolutely can okay yes. yep. so it doesn't have to be a town it's doing a buyout it. okay um, oh it's the buyout it's it's a it's buyout a buyout it's thing. a I buyout don't know it's different than it's for people that are not in floodplains right no because FEMA FEMA will buy out homes that are in floodplains, but I, mm -hmm. am I right? They won't buy out homes that aren't in floodplains? This is not a FEMA thing. It's a state thing. Right, that's what I'm saying. Charlie has a comment, but it's maybe L. Would yes. you like to speak? Yeah, I just wanted to, we have tried to apply for those Vermont hazard mitigation grants, but I get stopped after the second question on the pre-application form because the town itself has to move forward. So. Property owners cannot fill that pre-application form out. It has to be a municipality, state agency, RPC, etc. Unfortunately, so. Al, I'm, yes. I'm happy to fill one of those out for you. It's it's all like seven questions. It's a pre-application grant, so I'm happy to fill that out for you. As as a town administrator, whatever select board. Select board yeah. member. That's and, right. And that's the same with the EWP. I don't want to get her hopes up. I don't think that this hazard mitigation I don't would get pay for her bridge. I can't believe they, they would have offered this a long time ago. It's not a big deal. I, I have a lot of hopes up and down on that. Yeah. So I'm just trying to help us all figure things out together. I, and I haven't been able to fill it out on my own. So I'm not trying to get her probably the case for most property owners. And so I just want to make the town aware of that. And I'm not sure why they 
block us from going to the second question. I don't know enough about those grants. So just want to share that. Thank you. Do you have, uh, if L has my number, just L call me and we'll do it. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. I appreciate you. You got it. Hmm. Sarah, okay. did you want to make a comment? Yeah, I just want to add, just point of clarification, the Charlie Cook, that's L.O. Casey, were they saying that this, the EWP would not apply to the bridge, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. So the second thing I want to say is that the flood resilient communities is what is the program for people to buy out their homes. That's a state program that does not rely on FEMA money. Maybe federal money comes through there. That, that is for homes that are not in floodplains, and that has been depleted, but it's been recharged, so to speak. And if that program will open up soon, it has not opened up yet. Is that your understanding, L? I just talked with Stephanie Smith today to learn more about that. So yeah. they had thought there would be $11 million available in November. Only half of that is going to be available. So they said $5 million. And there are over 20 homes in Plainfield that have already applied for that. So there's not a lot of hope for Middlesex to qualify for any of that state buyout funding. In the near slash maybe long-term future. Um, and is that different than the hazard mitigation program, or is it the same thing? So oh. these these terms often overlap. Mm. For example, the buyouts that we've been doing that the board has approved, the 15 buyouts, that is part of that's the FEMA hazard mitigation right. program. Oh, okay. But there are a lot of hazard mitigation programs mm -hmm. that aren't FEMA. The flood resilient communities is specifically for homes that are not in the floodplain, but that are vulnerable to floods and landslides. And so my understanding with this, Zara, and this is what I've learned over the last like month or so, two months, is that your grant, which is due August 30th, in order for people who want to do it, who are in a floodplain and want to apply for a FEMA buyout, they have to do it by August 30th to get the pre-2023 value of their home. If they do it after August 30th, they get no value of whatever their home is right now, right? So that's what this is referring to. So like when, Victoria yep. applied for a buyout. Remember, I said to you, should we add it to this list? And you were like, no, because I'm already doing it, right? But Victoria could have just come to you to say, I want to do a buyout and I want to apply here. But and it would be the same thing. It would be a FEMA buyout. It still has to be approved by the select It still, oh, it still has to be approved by the select board. But that was like, you're adding that to this. So what Elle is hoping for but may not get is the state buyout because she's not in a floodplain. Right, and this it. says this says buyouts. All right. Yeah, it's confusing. Why would we know unless we had to learn? Right. Exactly. <laughs> so I need a motion from you guys yeah, right. to apply for this program mm. for okay. 2024. All right. Who's yeah, gonna make it? Dick moves. And who seconds? I'm gonna second. Zara second it. All those in favor? Okay. Dick right. moves. Woo! Yeah. Yep. Zara second it. This is Cliff Dodges. If you can just. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, that would be great. Um, that's you awesome. Email this to yourself. Check your email and you send yourself this. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, Thanks. If I need to fill it out, that's fine. Just send people to me. Okay. Okay. So, and we're all done with those signatures, right? For this. Got yes. the other ones. Okay. Perfect. Yes. And, and did I, I sign will, this? Um, I you know what? Why don't you sign? They're exactly the same. Just in case. Just I'm going to give Perfect. Sarah one and send her Perfect. on and. Okay. All righty. Thank you so much. Um, really all righty. So we Before are. You go, can I ask a quick question? You may. I was asked today when the 2023 work was going to begin. I was too. Um, here, she can figure out how to send. I just put mine in there. Um, Thanks. So. We're ready to go out to bid. We've got all these things You're ready to go done. To Lincoln from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission has been on vacation for a week. Imagine that. But he's coming back tomorrow okay. or the 22nd. Yeah. And I think the bids will be ready to go out. Really okay. soon. So it, it might have been the same person. Was it Phil? Huh? Was it Phil? Yeah. 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 Right I before I asked up. about 10 people. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I had grandkids. Thank today, you, so Adrian, for doing anything. all that. Thank you very it's much. Great to have you and it. your husband <laughs> helping us on all these town matters. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys oh, yeah. very much. You're doing okay. an incredible same job. Guy, Madam All right. Just saying goodbye. Oh, okay. Once we Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So we are right on target. 
645. It's mine. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Um, correspondence from Jennifer Tuttle, read driveway damage and Janet, okay, no, not Janet later. So Jennifer Tuttle, read driveway damage. Uh, did she send us something? I heard about it from Eric. Thank you so much. And, and what Eric told me was, um, and Sarah, maybe you can elaborate, was that, um, is Jennifer, are you here, Jennifer? It looks like Jennifer's actually here. I see a Jennifer. There is a Jennifer on. Yes, she says. Okay. Um, Jennifer, are you able to unmute, and would you like to, um, tell us about your correspondence? There you go. Um, yeah, so uh, water came from the road and the brook. Um, my driveway was uh, destroyed as well as water getting into my home. Um, so there, because of where I'm situated on the road, there is um, a decline and a curve uh, and water went straight into my personal ditch um, and overloaded, washed out the culvert and then came towards the house. Um, and I did find that there is a ditch that is near the road that has not been maintained and the culvert in front of my driveway that is also not maintained. So I am looking for support with getting that covered and seeing what else we could do. So um, Jennifer, right now the town does not have, uh, you're responsible for your own driveway culvert. So you know how your driveway touches, like attaches to the main road and there's yes, a culvert there. That, but there's an yeah. additional culvert that is within the road's right of way or the town's right of way. Um, I know, but that's still your response. Those are owner culverts. So the one that's attached to the road, the one that like basically you cross over your driveway onto the road and then there's a ditch, right? That is owner responsibility. That's mine. Yes, that's mine. But then there is a culvert that's right next to the road that has not been maintained. Mm -hmm. Does it go under the road? Are you talking about like a cross culvert that goes underneath the road? No, it doesn't go under the road. It goes to the river. So do you know what the do you know do you know what this culvert is? You can hardly see it unless you were here. Right, right. It's it's buried up. But yes. is it a cross culvert? Right. It goes across your driveway. Um, okay, I don't quite understand why that is a town culvert. Well, didn't Eric tell you it wasn't? He did tell us it wasn't, but why does she think it's a town culvert? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, Jennifer, why do you think if it's going under your driveway, why you think it, because it's in the right of way? Um, I have a culvert on my property that is about 20 feet from the road. There is an additional culvert that is within five feet of the road that is buried. There is no ditching or anything that's there. Um, okay, but so that's that is, still your culvert because it's under your driveway. Yeah, but if she doesn't have ditches leading to the culvert, are you saying that, your culvert? A lot of people don't have ditches, well, we'll right? See, yeah. What's that? Well, ditches to their culvert. Of course, that's where well, I mean, the water goes. You've got a ditch that goes down the road, and then your culvert goes in the ditch, and then your driveway goes over that. But did, but at any point, did you bring that up prior to the town? Um, I still don't prior understand. to when? It flooded. No, because I wasn't what? even aware that it was there. Okay, so neither was probably the town. Um, the town has to have knowledge of it because the town has a map of culverts everywhere. So I don't understand how you guys don't know that there's two culverts on my driveway. Mm -hmm. Okay, I unfortunately, because I can't picture what you're talking about, like I when I look at my when I look at my driveway coming off <coughs> onto Culver Hill Road, there's a culvert, right? And ditching That's, on either side. And ditching on either side, right? And from time to time, it gets filled up. Right, but that's my responsibility. Right. 
That's my yes, responsibility I have to clean one that. Of those, and then there's one that's closer to the road that is not maintained. Okay, I'd have to look at it because according to what Eric said, that's your culvert. It's in the right of way. It's, I do. Yeah, I so do it's my culvert. culvert. Yeah. My culvert's in your right of way. Culvert that right, I and that's what my point is, exactly. Right. Saying the same thing different. Yeah. yeah. So just so you know, Jennifer, the culvert that I'm talking about for my driveway is also in the town right of way. But that doesn't matter. It's still m my responsibility. Our culvert policy is that the owner is responsible for their driveway culvert that is in the town's right of way. That's the and what owner about responsibility. The ditching. The ditching, well, we do ditching when we can, but we, we're not always able to do ditching and we're not able to necessarily withstand giant rains. And so many people's driveways got damaged from this rain as a result of all of the rain and water having no place to go. Um, so there is no ditching um, where this is. That's so I'd rather, possible. I'd rather solve a problem than say, you know, we, yeah. we, we can't. So I, I don't know what Eric has, has Eric come to see you? Yes, he has. And he said that the town could probably help out with this particular culvert and the ditching because there isn't any that's ditching not, there at all. What he told me today. Yeah, that's not what Eric told me today either. So maybe he's, I, I don't know. Um, he may say that he could do ditching, but I don't think so. If you had to pay for something, we're not, we can't pay for your driveway repair. We could probably do the ditching. I'm not around. asking for yeah. that. Okay. What you're asking for is so that we could do the ditching so that the water runs the way the water should run. And, and is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, that doesn't seem unreasonable to me. I, I'm sorry. Well, I, listen, I'm just going to say that we, yes, the culverts are the, homeowner's responsibility but as we're here doing the right thing mm -hmm. uh, and fixing up the, the right? storm and fixing other people's things I mean uh, I didn't talk to Eric so I don't know what ha happened here and I don't know what the solution is but I don't think it's okay that so Jennifer since I can't picture this um, what is uh, I'll probably drive by at some point to see it. what is your you're definitely welcome to come by but uh, you're on Brook Road right Last yeah Brook Road. Is it the house closest to the um, like South Bear Swamp side or the other side? It's, South Bear Swamp, just below the intersection of Center Road and gotcha. Brook Road. Okay, and it's, so if you're going down, that is on the left. If you're going down this way, it's on the left. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Seventy-seven Brook Road. Seventy-seven Brook Road. Okay. Um, so it sounds like at the very least, what you'd like us to do is do some ditching so that water can move through that culvert. Because I think Eric said he didn't necessarily. I think. The culvert got exposed after the storm. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the other thing, too, is, and I'm not necessarily saying this to Jennifer, some driveways don't have culverts. Remember that man? Right. Yes. Yeah. Like that has, um, that has, that's, that we visited. He has a driveway that just goes over the road without a culvert. And it's why? A, if it's at the top of a rise. So the water goes away from his driveway both ways. He doesn't need a culvert. Okay, so you don't always have to have a culvert. No, no, no I don't have a culvert. Plus that cross culvert is right before his driveway, okay. so it shoots it underneath the road, in theory, once yeah. that's opened up. Okay. Yeah, that's another scenario, right? I, Do you know issues. offhand if her driveway, somebody just put in that culvert, or it had to have a culvert, based on where it is? Do you know? I, I don't know. I mean, before, that, that place was uh, like, a, wasn't that like a camp? Jennifer, you said? Um, at camp in 2000, and they turned it into a home in about 2004. Okay. I don't know what they did, you know, pro, you know right. it, it goes back a long time, really. Do some people put in culverts even when they don't need to? And they shouldn't? I'm just curious, like, is that a reality or not? It, maybe the road was close. I, I don't know what the yeah. scenario was. Okay. I never know. So, um, I think probably what we'll do, Jennifer, is um, stop by on our way home. Yeah, just stop by on our way home, take a quick look at it, and then talk to Eric and see what he can do in terms of um, future ditching so that that doesn't happen the next time it rains, that your driveway gets washed out. Is that what okay. you would hope for? Is that Does that sound like a plan? I just need some support and help because I'm already spending tens of thousands of dollars. So. Yeah. 
Okay. We just need to visualize it. So if you don't mind us stopping yeah, off. That is totally fine. In 15, yeah. 20, half hour. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you for, for coming and being able to explain it to us. Um, Okay, so anything else about that, or can we move on to Layla Macy? Oh, named after Macy Road, or is Macy Road named after oh, Layla Macy? Drive permit? Yes, and he Towards said the they were going to put in an 18-inch culvert. That's what he's doing now. When anytime anyone needs a culvert, he's putting in an 18-inch. With what? It is. She withdrew. You think? He's. Yeah. I asked him. I said depends you don't need on, a bigger one. Depends on where it is that it would be. He says it's on a flat area. Who knows? So did you submit an email correspondence with Gloria Hobson today? No. Gloria Hobson was across the street, and she doesn't have time to check this today, but she is worried that she's concerned that the logging road goes over her spring. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And Eric does not seem to think this is a concern because the... There's a picture. Because there is a... Um, because this logging road was used in the winter, it's been used frequently over the years, and this is where this access permit is on the logging road, and that if she was she was going to have problems with the road, with, with, with their spring, she would have known it by now. However, she has asked if the board, if you approve this, if you could just make it conditional that the spring, that she, that con conditional approval depending on, depending on her Term, determining that there, her spring will not be affected. And then she's also very concerned about where water will come out of the culvert. So that's, I'm just relate. I'm that. just curious, is the spring her well? Like, is she getting water right now? I guess now so, yes. Spring into people, her people. You know, that would be a concern. Yeah. I mean, mine's I under my driveway. Huh? Hold on, everybody. I'm confused. So this, her, her spring is where? Her spring comes from Worcester. Uh, it goes, it comes from Worcester, crosses down. Is there a over, pipe underneath it? I don't know. No, I guess it'd have to be. It has to be. Yeah, so I wouldn't think there's just like running through the water, but it rocks. But anyway, it comes across, it comes across, but this used to be the McCarthy subdivision, and it came through some part of the McCarthy subdivision, but she says she's also talked to David Carkey, who lives right near there, and he moved a driveway because it was, in, it was possibly endangering her spring. Yeah, he did. So you did. So there we are. We're all on the same page. Okay. So is this someone who bought land and was told they could have a driveway there, and now this woman's saying, "Well, it was in my spring it was is here." Recently or sold. What? It was a subdivision that was recently sold to one person, and then this person just sold to to Lila Macy. I think that's what the deal is. And anyway, she's asked to put an access permit in where that rot logging road is. Gloria found out about this, and she's very concerned about her spring. And also where the culvert will drain water if it drains onto her property. Sounds like it needs a second look. Mm -hmm. I think it needs a second look too, and maybe it needs more than an 18 inch culvert. Right. And my experience with, uh, with uh, don't say it? Okay. No, I'm like, well, I'm just, I'm sure what your experience, I'm like, dreading <laughs> what you're going to say. Scared me. <laughs> I was like, you're like, scared me. I'm like, Arca's putting the camera right on it. She wants to know. <laughs> But no, no, it, it's 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 like, you know, several times I've cut, done logging, and, and you, it's not even if you drive over the spring it might freeze it, but if if she's using that for water, it certainly could freeze her water line. Wait, having a driveway over it? Yeah, like absolutely. Just what we have driving the we frost can. down? Yeah, drive the frost down the back. That's oh all. lordy, now what? Take another look at it. Do we have to ascertain? But doesn't she have to have a right of way for her well? Like an easement or spring something? Spring rights? She might have it from, you can have spring rights on somebody else's property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then we mm -hmm. need to know that because. Well, she probably does have spring rights on the property. The question is whether or not this driveway is going to go over her spring. In that case, she it might have to know. be moved, I would say. Yeah, it's well, like I'm not running the risk of having this happen to no. that woman. Right. What's okay. the woman's name? Gloria right. Hobson. Gloria Hobson. I will let her know, and she's, she can shop, probably meet with Eric or whatever yeah. they did with the car key. And I think we need someone besides Eric to help make that decision. Yeah. I'll go up. Do you, and you think that you you could say maybe the driveway needs to go this way? Do we know where her pipe is, this Gloria she Hobson? She will know. She just hasn't had a chance. She okay. said, I just found out about this because so, of the okay. porch form. I think I that's a great idea. I think we also need to 
get her to find out what her spring rights right of way blah blah she, blah. She will do that. She's yeah, yeah that's yeah, her it responsibility. Would be, it yeah. would be in her deed if she had spring rights. Former. Yes, yeah. it would be in her deed. Yeah. I mean, let me just say that those deeds are really crappy. It's like you know we have spring rights. It's a big thing. She probably knows where her spring is. What she doesn't know is where the driveway is going. Right. That's the issue. Yeah. So it's like I she just needs to go out there and look at the spring, and then she also needs to like where this is where the driveway is. This is where my spring is. Okay, and then her issue is culvert water runoff, which is just the issue that the everybody. Would everyone has that issue, including you myself. Eyes on it. That's funny. So <laughs> just as an FYI, I my I have a my well's right underneath my driveway, and Your it well. was a real pain. I had to get John Picard in with an excavator when it when it burned out, right? Dig it all up okay. just to yeah. have something dropped in and retied and blah blah Ooh, blah. That's a well. That's a well. Well, that's just well. deeper. This is spring, this well, is spring where it's gonna be a lot more shallow and freezing is the yeah. Okay. So do you want to just pass over We're this gonna pass thing? over that. And I think uh, any other matters that come before the board, we've got some orders. What's our schedule so I know? Well, he had a concert tonight, which uh, is why I, I I, It's going to be next week because we need Eric Thursday and Friday of this week. So it'll be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday of next week. And probably not Tuesday or Thursday because those are female days. <laughs> Already then. I would suggest Monday or Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys can just wait. Any other matters that come before the board? Anyone? Wait, Linda, Linda, do you want to? Oh, talk? Linda. No, I, I'm totally confused. There's so much discussion here <laughs> oh but did you come for a reason or are you just no I just want to see how you ran your whole thing and okay. I might see you in another month or so but um... well thank you for coming <laughs> yeah <laughs> and don't be shy about asking questions <laughs> I know I'm not I'm new to the game here <laughs> <laughs> okay any other matters that come before the board Alrighty then. Well, thank you all who joined us on Zoom. Thank you all who came in person. And thank you, Orca. Yes. Okay. And this meeting is a joy. Good night, all. Good night, all.